Do you think it's fair to say Iraq saved Latin America? That with the attention of President Bush on Iraq, we're seeing Latin America go in a very different direction? Nobody saves. No? I think it's true when, when President Bush is, is tells us each day that we are suffering the high risk of being attacked by terrorism. It's true. And terrorism made the Iraq war and they perhaps may today or tomorrow, I don't know, invade some Latin American countries. It's a, it's a tradition of the terrorist imperialist power in the world. And who knows? We are not safe, you are not safe, nobody is safe, safe from a possible attack from this uh, machine of war, this big structure we, we have built, they have built uh, in, a, in, in a, a global dimension. This uh, $2,600 million spent each day to ki kill other people. This machine of killing people, devouring the, the, the world resources, eating the world resources each day. So this is a, a, a terrorist structure indeed, and we are in danger. So President Bush is right, I think. We, we are suffering a terrorist menace. One of the, the enormous changes, it seems to me, in Latin America has been, especially in the last uh, decade or two, sort of the uh, rise of indigenous demands for, for rights, uh, whether it's in Chiapas in Mexico or Evo Morales or, yeah. uh, and, and what's going on in Ecuador. Your sense of this long, because you have written about it, you wrote about it in the open veins of Latin America, how the native peoples of, of Latin America were so long oppressed and kept down uh, by the uh, uh, mulatto or the, or the white elites of, uh, of those countries and how this changed having an impact on, on the continent. One of the oldest traditions in America, all America, because we are America also. Uh, the name America has been kidnapped by the United States, but really we are part of America. No? And so in the three, in all America, from north to south, from Alaska to Chile, one of the most beautiful traditions is the identity between word and fact in the Indian tradition. I mean, the sacred nature of, the sacred character of word, of language. And this is something not so frequent in the dominant cultures, but they have kept it alive. This faith on words, on the sacred power of words. Bolivia is now, has now a, an Indian president, Evo Morales. It was a first scandal, Evo Morales, an Indian president, and an Indian who was not ashamed of being what he is, first scandal. The scandal would have been the fact that Bolivia took two centuries to realize that it was a country with Indian majority in the population, and it would be perfectly normal that they have a an Indian president as Evo Morales. But this was the first scandal. Now we have the second. And the second scandal came from the deep respect Evo Morales have, has for this Indian tradition in, in, of um, devotion to words. Why are so many people angry, angry against him? Because he nationalized oil and gas. That's it. He did what he promised he would do, which is a cardinal thing from the viewpoint of a 
system based on lies that teach you to lie each day and each night, even when you're having dreams or nightmares. And your assessment, Eduardo Galeano, of the Venezuelan president, Hugo Chavez, and this uh, titanic struggle he is in with the president of the United States, President Bush. What do I think about it? No, I think that uh, um, Chavez is being demoni demonized. I mean, he's one of the demons. I don't know if he will, he will be demon tomorrow or not, but he is nowadays a, a good demon. Useful for uh, an international war machine who is always hung hungry of demons. I mean, they need demons to justify the fact that we are, that the world is, is just, uh, spending fortunes in the in military in the industry. So weapons need wars, and wars need alibis. And alibis are demons, and the evil forces which, which, which are, which are uh, our, our daily danger. And uh, so they have invented that Chavez may be a, a danger for humanity, but in that he's a tyrant and he's a um, despotic uh, dictator. He won eight elections. It's a strange being a dictator. Eight clean elections won by him. I was uh, uh, an international observer in in this plebiscite he, he, he did, I don't remember now, but something like a couple of years ago, which was quite, quite exceptional in human history. The first time, perhaps, in which a, a president would say to the people, here is my, my post, my job. If you decide that I'm not a good president, then I'll go out. And p people voted to keep him in power. Jimmy Carter was also an international observer. We worked together in Gaviria. And uh, it was unanimous, the certitude that this was a clean election. Then I have never seen the case of a, of a tyrant being so uh, democratically confirmed so many times. It's strange. Where did this, this uh, hate come from? Perhaps, perhaps, I don't know, because he is a real patriot. I mean, he's taking care of his people and his country. And patriotism nowadays is a privilege of rich countries. If you are, if you are the leader of a third world country, then your patriotism would be always suspicious of being populism or terrorism or something, some other ism, I don't know, terrible ism they may invent to, to falsify the love you feel for, for your own people.